Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Moninder Singh Sambi, Vice President uh, at Cloud Networking here at Google Cloud. And today I'm joined here with Tom Gillis, SVP and General Manager for Security and Infrastructure. Hey Moninder, good welcome, to see you. Welcome Tom. Good to see you again, right? <laughs> Our paths have crossed many times. Yes. yes. I'm going to take a few minutes and just introduce Cloud Van. We're really excited about launching this fully managed, globally available, reliable van solution for our enterprise. It's obviously built on our performance optimized network, this global scale that we have with 33 subsea cables and roughly about 2 million plus miles of lit fiber. In addition, there's obviously built in security. Security can't be bolted on, has to be built in for anything that we do. One of the things that we do rely on is the ability to bring in the rich ISV ecosystem that we have, fully integrate it and make it available to our joint customers. So that's why I'm going to pass it on to Tom. Uh, Tom, as we talk about Cisco, I mean, Cisco needs no introduction. Yes. One of the largest infrastructure companies. Yes. Cisco has evolved a lot, right, from infrastructure now to software. Mm -hmm. But first, can you start with what that journey's been and what is Cisco's focus as it comes to providing this network as a service or SD-WAN security play? Yeah, uh, the networking world has changed substantially and software is you know, the dominant form. Manundu, what is the number one thing that I think a customer is looking for when they think about their network. What, what's the number one attribute? Reliability. It works, right? It should exactly. work. It should all the work time. All the time, right? Never, never, never a glitch. So, so this is our focus, and I think this is what's exciting about the combination of Cisco SD-WAN and Google, is that we were able to take SD-WAN technology and show that you can fuse together multiple unreliable links and create one extremely reliable link at a very low cost. And that was the SD-WAN re revolution, that eliminated dedicated fixed wires. So that works for the first mile, but what about all the miles in between, right? And this is where our partnership I think is so interesting by bringing Cisco SD-WAN technology right into the Google network and then seamlessly merging that into the Google backbone, we able to deliver on that promise of it just works all the time, every time, and also, it works really, really fast. Because in this AI world, the speed of the network is going to grow exponentially. Exponentially. We are in the AI era. Yes. But let me like, go back to what you just mentioned. So yeah. if I was a customer and I was mm -hmm. deploying SD-WAN um, you know, branch devices, yes. I'm using, I would say, a mix of business internet or whatever internet I can procure Correct. as Correct. a last mile. Yes. Sometimes yeah. it's wireless, you know, could and, be anything. And yes. could be wireless, and then could connect back to a SD-WAN header that is Correct. now in Google Cloud, Correct. fully integrated. Correct. And from Google, once they terminate traffic at SD-WAN, they're going to a SaaS or a cloud application, could Correct. be in any cloud. Correct. They could traverse through the entire Correct. Google backbone, but yes. get end-to-end -end reliability of Correct. four lines. Correct, that's the goal. Uh, and and that's, that's really, really important for yeah. our customers. One yeah. is, Network downtime is yeah. no longer appreciated. Correct. It has direct impact to employee productivity, branches going off, yes. ATM devices not being accessed, yep. hospitals yeah. going down. Yeah. Cannot, there should be no compromise. Yeah. The second, I think, is you can achieve the same value yeah. of saving costs that you saw with SD-WAN, yes. as well as consuming in a yes. cloud consumption model, yes. a I mean, backbone. This, this is Google's revolution, in my opinion, right? Is, is your massive, massive scale in infrastructure is bringing those level of efficiencies to the backbone. We fuse that in with what we do with the last mile, we've got a, a very, very strong Correct. combination. Right? Now, one other thing that Cloud Van also offers is now that the traffic patterns have changed from site to site, they predominantly become cloud or SaaS. Yes. And one of the things that we have, we have the number one BGP peering that we have yes. around the globe yes. with almost majority of enterprise SaaS applications. Correct. And we have direct, fully managed connectivity into any cloud yes. through cross-cloud interconnect. Yes. So not only will the customer get low latency, uh, reliability, yeah. but also performance optimized for their application. Yes. In a Wherever much more low their application may be. Wherever the application may be. Correct, right. And, and Cisco's job is to bring that right up to the edge, right? Edge, yes. Yeah, wherever the edge may be. Like, what, what can our customers expect? Yeah. Like, when they deploy the solution that's coming together with Google and Cisco, yeah. how should their security architecture evolve to? Yeah, yeah. So at, at Cisco, our view is that where security meets the nest network, this is where Cisco shines. And when we think about security, we talk about access control. Who gets to access all of those apps that you talked about that are SaaS apps and cloud-based applications? The network is the logical and some kind of intrinsic place to make that decision. And so the way we think about security is actually quite simple. We want to implement least privileged access. So salespeople can get to the sales applications, IT people can get to IT applications, but you don't want salespeople getting into your IT apps. 
That's a really simple concept, but it can actually be hard to implement that. And so the way we do this is with an identity-based system. So we know who you are, and we can figure out the salespeople, and we know what the applications are, and then we'll automatically apply those policies. But what's interesting about this is that that principle of least privileged access, it doesn't just apply to people. It also applies to printers. People forget that printers are kind of people too, right? It's a little tiny computer that's running in a branch office. So the printer or the telephone or the thermostat should be allowed to talk to the print manager app, but nothing else. Nothing else. I want to apply least privileged principles, not just to users, but I want to apply them to things. And this is where Cisco has unique capabilities. It's what, what Gartner is calling universal zero trust network access. So one of the things that uh, got my excitement uh, right now, Tom, you talked about AI. Yes. The way we look at it at Google, this is the fourth era that the industry is going to go through. Yes. It started off with internet, yes. started off with streaming, started yeah. with cloud era, yes. now with the AI era. Yeah. Everyone fundamentally believes the yeah. amount of capacity that we're going to build, yes. uh, whether it be telcos or any of the CSPs, it's yeah. going to be almost 10x yeah. of yeah. what we have ever expected before. Yes. Right? Yes. In this AI era, everyone is going to, every enterprise that we talk to yeah. are going to transform their digital application. They're going yes. to become gen AI it's applications. Happening. It's already yeah. happening. At, at a breakneck speed, really. Yes. Okay. Yeah, this is an area we've been investing very heavily, and I think, I think you know that. So in the world of AI, there are fundamental changes in the semantics of a security policy. So in the old world, we used to think about an application, it was very deterministic. There's a presentation layer, app logic layer, and a data layer. And you can go into the database and you could see the data and secure the data and measure the data and look for the data elsewhere. Now we introduce this thing called a model that sits in between there. And when a model learns something, it never forgets, ever. And, but you, yet you can't go in and delete a piece of data out of a model. And so where we see the challenge is that, that an AI-based application allows for a series of sequential queries. And a great analogy here is when you were a kid, did you ever play the game 20 questions? Yes. Right? So I've got a secret. You've got 20 questions to try to guess my secret. secret. Almost every time you can guess the secret if you ask these related questions. And you kind of gauge by my response what it is. Well, that's what happens in AI. And that if a model knows Tom's bank account number and it's not supposed to talk about it, an attacker can play 20 questions or 200 questions and usually get the answer. So yes, the, the, the fundamental way of doing security in AI-based world, like a firewall has no notion of those types of semantics. And so we need to evolve the way we do security. We are building that capability in to our secure access. That's really powerful, and we're going to integrate this with the technology that we have Correct. that almost provides cloud stitching for yes. any third-party appliance, whether it be from Cisco or any other ISV vendor, they can seamlessly integrate and leverage the power of this AI firewall that you talked about. Yes, yep. Now, we talked about AI, we talked about security. Yeah. <clears throat> AI brings a whole new challenge from a network. What does a network-optimized latency performance mean? Yes. Yes. What do you think about network optimization for an AI application? It's a really, really, really big deal. So why is it a really big deal? It's useful to understand Moore's law, every 18 months, meant a processor got twice as fast. But these are sequential processors, so it was 2x. With AI, we're doing vector processing in a GPU. And so with each click of Moore's law, the clock gets faster, but we're adding more processing elements. So we see this massive explosion of data. And the emphasis is like, wow, what these GPUs can do, they're incredible. Well, you need the network to feed those GPUs. And so you know this, you and I have been working on building networking devices that can run as fast as 800 gigabits per second per port, and that's not enough, right? So it's, yeah. we gotta go to 1.6 terabits and 3.2, right? So the, the bandwidth that these things consume is astronomical. Now, as this AI revolution explodes all around us, a lot of that stuff's gonna be living in Google Cloud, right, or in the data center. But more and more, we see these AI applications moving out to the edge. The robot bartender that I'm always yeah. dreaming about, right? Or a more pedantic thing of a industrial controller or a hospital environment. Even an office setting is gonna have AI-based applications that are using vector processing. So the, the, the network requirements for this, in terms of both latency and throughput, it is explosive. And I think the combination of what we're doing with Cisco SD-WAN and Google with your backbone capability, we are perfectly positioned to meet these needs of a very, very high performance, 
very, very reliable, very low latency connection that can power all these AI-based applications. It's an exciting time. Yes, and not just for training workload, but also inferencing. Correct. People yep. and devices. Yep be able to connect into the cloud, yes. where most of the applications are. Yes. Use Cloud WAN and yes. the SD-WAN to get back end-to-end -end reliability, yes. low latency, yep. no compromise on security. Yes. And at the same time, as they evolve to AI applications, fully secure yeah. from deployment or yep. development of choosing what the model is to run time. To run time. In Correct. a very simple yeah. and easy to consume manner. Yeah. Cisco and Google are taking the friction out of networking, and we're bringing networking into the AI world together. And we're really excited to be working with you. We are excited as well. The partnership has been really great and yeah. looking forward for more innovations to come. Yes, Thank you, Tom. Likewise. Thanks.